It's a Twitter lockdown. Reports of leaked usernames and passwords of more than 32 million accounts spurred Twitter execs to lock down some of these accounts. Joining us now to break it all down, we have Jeremy Kaplan. He's editor-in-chief at digitaltrends.com. Jeremy, what exactly is going on here? It sounds like an extraordinary number. They're saying as many as 32 million accounts, maybe even more. Twitter is arguing that their servers have not been breached. Twitter claims this is not a problem on its end, which is kind of an interesting point. But it's still, it's still kind of scary for the consumer. What are you going to do? Has your account been breached? A quick alert, if you haven't gotten an email yet, you have not been breached. You should be okay. If you've got an alert, they, they haven't said how many accounts they've actually warned. If you've got an alert, you should go change your password right now. Okay. Well, luckily, I haven't gotten an alert yet, so thank goodness. But <laughs> let's talk about the dark web because Twitter says it hasn't been hacked, and these accounts, these passwords, these names have been on the dark web. What exactly is the dark web? Sort of the underbelly of the Internet, sites that aren't indexed, sites that aren't part of Google. There's a whole world of, of websites that exist out there, oftentimes used for malicious activity, trading of passwords, sales of drugs, uh, all sorts of illicit activities, terrorist activities take place often on the dark web. Okay. So we heard about this breach first over there. But Jeremy, how does this work? So if Twitter hasn't been hacked, how exactly did these passwords and usernames even get out there in the first place? The problem, to be honest, is you and, and me and uh, us and all of us. The challenge here is that there were some enormous breaches earlier that, we, that came out earlier. There was one of LinkedIn, there was one of MySpace, hundreds of millions of passwords from those guys. Hacks that occurred years ago and the passwords have only just come out. And the right. challenge is that you and I use the same password for every site. So if you have someone's password for MySpace or LinkedIn or whatever it is, you might also have their password for Twitter. Wow. It's as simple as that. Okay, we so are to blame. It could even go beyond just Twitter. So what about credit cards and you know financial transactions and thefts? Yeah, you have to ask yourself, are you using this one password for every site? And if you are, you know, something happens on one site that you consider innocuous, maybe you don't care so much about a, a, a site and you create some generic, silly version of your password, and boom, it's almost the exact same password. All of a sudden, your Citibank account has been compromised, your Chase account is compromised. So we yep. need to start thinking better about security, which security experts have been telling us for years. Oh, yes, we have been hearing this for years. But Jeremy, it comes really, you know, on a week where we've you know, talked about the hacking of NFL commissioner, Mr. Goodell's accounts, Mark Zuckerberg, his Instagram, Pinterest and uh, the like, and also even a, a Twitter co-founder, Evan Williams. Yep. Well, Zuckerberg's account was hacked because he used the same easy to, to memorize <laughs> password on several different password accounts. To guess, right? It was da da da. Like, nice work there, buddy. You should know better of all people. What we all need to do is set up something called two factor authentication. It's a pain in the butt. It means you get an extra text message when you go to log into a website. But bang, all of a sudden, if you don't have your cell phone, nobody can log into your account. It's, it's that simple. Yeah, okay, but, you know, just all these, uh, I guess, these stories of people getting hacked into, is it showing us that maybe that, you know, how unsafe the Internet web is right now? That's a good point. You know, actually, I don't think that that's the case. I think it's a lot of the same things that we've been seeing for years. The malicious software that gets downloaded onto people's websites when they surf somewhere. Uh, the fact that we use such easy to guess silly passwords. It's the same thing that has been happening over and over again. I think we're just suddenly more aware of a couple of these high profile events. Okay. So uh, nothing is really less secure today. It's just that we still haven't taken the same steps we should have taken a decade ago. Jeremy, thank you so much for explaining. The word of Kaplan. warning over here. All right, to editor in chief, digitaltrends.com. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Susan Lee. Have a great day. Hey, CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you're going to find videos packed with all of the information that you need to be smarter about your finances. You can subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me or the eye right here to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.